So it's not an excuse for anyone not to use a condom. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. So if you're allergic, we have ones that do not have the allergies. <laughs> so no excuse. No, no excuse for using a condom. <laughs> Hi guys, it's your girl Lydia PC here back again with another educational, motivational, and inspiring video. Today's Monday, we are learning about medicine. And this week we are talking about contraceptives. This is part two of the video. So if you have not watched part one, please click the link up here and go back and watch part one of the video. The question that we got was just, are there any safe ones? If so, what are they, et cetera? Okay, yes. Yeah, so the permanent ones are the surgical ones that we talked about in the previous mm -hmm. video. And then at the beginning of the video, Naomi also mentioned a very important topic topic i guess she mm -hmm. said when parents are having these conversations about contraceptives you should mm -hmm. you should involve the male as well the male child we should mm -hmm. not leave them aside you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay another form of birth control is something we call vasectomy it's a procedure a surgical procedure that it, that is done to tie the male tubes actually they have a, something called vas deferens and that is a tube that connects the testes where the sperms are produced to the urethra where the sperms travel outside of the penis. Now, this method is not something to be used acutely. It's not like a male can go to the doctor and say, hey, I want vasectomy so I can go and engage in sexual intercourse like tomorrow. <laughs> it takes up to 12 weeks for it to be wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not a urologist, so please, if you want medical advice, please go and talk to your doctor. This information mm -hmm. is just to help you to get thinking, to be aware of what is there so you can ask the right questions when you go to your doctor. Now, the next one I'd like to talk about, which is, I think, one of the safest, because with the surgical ones, remember, it comes with risks for surgery. Uh -huh. like people can react to the anesthesia or the medications that are used for anesthesia. You can have an allergic reaction. Also, wound healing because someone is cutting into your body. So there are just so many side effects that come with surgical procedure, although these are permanent. And a lot of doctors have done these procedures so many times, so they are like experts in what they do. So, you know, mm -hmm. but anyway, the next one that I think is the safest among the contraceptives that we are going to be talking about today is condoms. <laughs> condoms, uh -huh. if used correctly, are <laughs> effective and you know, if, if there's a big, if, if used correctly, they are effective. And um, we have both male and female condoms. And I know some people are allergic to latex and most condoms are plastic and they're made of latex, but we do have condoms that are not made of latex. So it's not an excuse for anyone not to use a condom. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. So if you're allergic, we have ones that do not have the allergies. <laughs> so no excuse. No, no excuse for <laughs> using a condom. <laughs> And the reason why I say this is the like the safest, of course, safety, like I said, is a relative term, but it's the safest because unlike the other forms of contraceptions or birth control, condoms mm -hmm. will also protect you from sexually transmitted diseases. Yes. Okay. And this is something we don't talk about. And it's important. Some she well. <laughs> sexual. <laughs> <laughs> Some sexual diseases like syphilis are terrible. They can affect your nervous system. So, oh. away from your genitals to your brain. Wow. So sexual transmitted diseases are a serious thing, not just having a baby at the wrong time. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And, and Lydia, I don't want to stop your, your thought, but just the conversation around STDs, STIs, that could be an entire different conversation. Because I think while we're talking, we, we're focusing obviously on understanding you know, menstrual cycle, contraceptives, the types and things like that, but also understanding that there are other, other, like you just said, there are other things to consider outside of just, you know, an unwanted or an unplanned pregnancy that yes. could have very permanent, long lasting impacts if you aren't thoughtful in the decisions that you're making. So I, not that I'm trying to put a plug for another video, but <laughs> you think that a conversation around just you know like sexual health mm -hmm. um there is is very very important and sometimes maybe it's just the lack of knowledge 
and awareness is is why you know you see so many in, so much increase in sexually transmitted diseases and infection. I wanted to say something on that part. Mm-hmm. I wanted to say we were actually lucky. My parents had that conversation with us. They really tried on that part. Mm-hmm. They really made us aware, like the sexual transmitted diseases, the consequences. My dad came home with videos, not only for us, but even for the kids around us, the neighborhood, and even in the church. Mm-hmm. Then showed us, you know, the gonorrhea, syphilis, how they look like when you get them and all that stuff. And I feel like it was really good because I have never forgotten some of those images are in my mind. Right. I never forgot that. Yes. And maybe they're part of the reason I live my life good because <laughs> you don't want to get any of those things. Yeah. But um, it's, it's really a good conversation to have as well mm-hmm. because a lot, of, a lot of people, I have friends when I told them about this, they never knew anything about it. Their parents, their teachers, their inner circle, nobody discussed anything like that to them. So they really have no idea about the STIs or STDs. They just hear about it but they really don't know the consequences about them. So it's a good, really conversation to have as well. Great. No, I'm happy to hear that from you. Um, yeah. It is. Okay, yeah. So in my opinion, condom is the safest if, there's a big if, if it is used correctly, because there are so many medical stories that happen, um, infection or pregnancy, because people did not use their condoms correctly. And sometimes the condom sticks up in a vagina or it comes off or something. <laughs> I know. No, or if it's expired. Or I had that they expired. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or they weren't stored properly. I remember watching a movie where a guy had <laughs> condom in his wallet for like years. Oh and my God. It, like by the time he opened it, it was like almost silly putty. Like it wasn't even, which I know is an exaggeration, but I do think there are people out there who don't under, one is the expiration date, but one actually how to like s- store it properly. For you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's a good point. And a lot of healthcare facilities do offer condoms for free. Mm-hmm. And like I said, women, I know a lot of women don't feel empowered like to take charge of their sexual life. And mm-hmm. you should. Of course, many of us know about the male condoms, but like I mentioned, we do have female condoms. They're called diaphragms. And uh, again, go and talk to your GIN. They are the expert. But my understanding, it, my understanding is it's a ring-like thing. And mm-hmm. you can hold it in the middle and then you insert it in your vagina. Then once it goes in the vagina, it will expand like this. So you can safely have sexual intercourse. And then after the sexual intercourse, make sure you remove it. And I think that can empower women out there that there's something they can do, even if their partner doesn't mm. want to use a condom. And mm. also, it's also a form of birth control. We do have something called spermicide. So mm-hmm. in, in biological terms, side means killing. So it's a, it's, a, it's a gel-like substance that kills sperms. So this is sometimes added to condoms and especially the female um, diaphragm. So what happens is when that spermicide is put on the condom and sometimes it comes in a tube and women can apply it in their vaginal area, in their vagina. So it kills, what, if a sperm makes its way into the vagina or the cervix, it can kill um, the sperm, so it prevents it from being pregnant. Now, about the safety of that, I'm not sure. Personally, I wouldn't want to put in chemical that kills a sperm. I'm afraid that it can kill my- (laughs) (laughs) I was thinking about that. (laughs) But I feel like I need to put it out there since we are talking about birth control and contraceptive and some people would want to know about it. Okay, now we do have the oral contraceptives, okay? And this is what many people use. I think more than 50% of women who are using birth control um, use the oral contraceptives. And we have different forms of oral contraceptives. We do have a combination pill. So this pill has something, the chemicals I was talking about early in the menstrual cycle. They have progesterone. Sometimes it's called progestin. That's the synthetic form of the natural progesterone. And then they also have estrogen. So the combination pill has two hormones in them, progesterone and estrogen. And the reason why this is important, so our bodies produce estrogen and progesterone to help with the cycles I was was talking about. So the first half, the eggs release estrogen, which helps in the growing of the endometrium, the inner lining of the uterus. So Mm -hmm. that is the role of the estrogen. And then with the progesterone, it's usually in higher levels during the 
last half of the menstrual cycle. So mm -hmm. the, the part I was calling the secretory phase. So mm -hmm. it gets secreted um, to maintain to maintain that lining so that when a body when a baby is conceived on around day 14, progesterone helps in maintaining the lining, which will carry the baby for nine months. Okay. Wow. So mm -hmm. now you would wonder then why are you getting this hormone? So the reason mm -hmm. why you're given an external like supplement to these hormones is because when progesterone levels are high, remember I said the menstrual cycle begins and ends at the same place. With mm -hmm. the so when the, when the progesterone level is high, then it prevents the cycle from starting again. Because uh -huh. at the end of the cycle during the menses, when you're holding that inner lining of the uterus, then your progesterone levels go down. Because remember, uh -huh. progesterone maintains that uterus, okay? Uh -huh. But then if the progesterone goes down, then you're shedding that lining of the uterus. Uh, that makes sense. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> okay. So that's why we're given those hormones. And of course, now the, the estrogen helps, helps maintain it too. It's like they work together. Mm -hmm. That's the oral or the combined oral contraceptions. And usually women are given 28 pills. So, and this is for the four weeks. So seven times four is 28. So for the first three weeks, you take the combined um, estrogen progesterone. And then mm -hmm. the last week, women take something called a placebo. A placebo, okay. It's just a pill that has nothing. And this is because when, so when you have the high levels of progesterone the first 21 days, so the first three weeks, and then when you stop taking the combined pill and you take the placebo pill, then you get something they call with, withdrawal bleeding. Can I ask just a follow-up question to that? <laughs> That's why I paused, because I know I put a lot of information. I was there. like, wait a minute. For some reason, I thought that you took those placebo pills just to kind of keep you, you know, used to taking a pill every day. So you wouldn't oh. get <laughs> That's what I thought it was. I didn't know that it was something like, I didn't, I didn't know that there was any other reasoning for, for that pill being there. It's actually a very correct reason because that's exactly why you take the placebo pill. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if at the same time we're, we're kind of talking about the different types of birth control, I wonder if it's if we should maybe answer one of the questions around, like how do you choose the right one? Mm -hmm. And a part two to that question was really like, you know, are there side effects that we should be aware of? And I think you kind of talked about it when you, when you talked about like the surgical options mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, I wonder if you want to kind of talk about maybe how you choose it and then maybe what are some potential side effects to just be in, aware of, you know, generally? Mm -hmm. No, that's a good question again. So, yeah, so I talked about the combined oral contraceptive pill and those are the ones that a lot of people use. But again, every medication you take has side effects, right? And this is a good transition to also actually a point I wanted to talk about. Like there's another type of, of birth control that is also oral. It's called progestin. So mm. with this birth control, you're not taking combined estrogen and progestin. You're just taking progestin alone. And, and, and this is because, and it's a side effect too. So this is because some women react to estrogen. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also, if you are above 35 years old and smoking and breastfeeding, your doctor should not let you take a combined estrogen and progestin pill. Why? Because if you're above 35 years old and smoking, okay, not just 35 years old, above 35 years old and smoking, you have a higher chance of forming blood clots. And doctors do not like blood clots because even if you form blood clots in your legs, it can travel up to your heart and to your lungs and you get something called PE, pulmonary embolism, and it's deadly. It's an emergency. Yeah. And if you're smoking, smoking destroys your blood vessels. So if you're smoking, please talk to your doctor about how you can, they can help you stop smoking. And I can talk more about smoking cessation in a future video. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like this is important, especially for women. It's really, smoking is really not good for your health at all. That, right? that reminds, I, need, I need to point out something on that as well. With the smoking and being above 35 and oral contraceptive, that 
is it true that you're at a high risk of developing cancer, especially the cervical? Yes, yes, good point, Naomi. It's interesting with the hormonal birth control, like with the estrogen and um, progesterone, they actually, okay, and this, it, thank you, I'm going to answer your question and also answer Bree's question. Okay. This is actually a serious side effect or adverse event that women who are on oral contraceptives with estrogen and progesterone, they can experience. So it, incre it increases your risk of developing cervical Mm -hmm. or um, ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. However, however, mm -hmm. this is interesting, it is protective against endometrial cancer. Endometrial cancer, is, yeah, I know. Endometrial cancer is the cancer that develops in your womb, in the endometrium, mm -hmm. again, the inner yeah. lining of your uterus. Mm -hmm. so because the progesterone and estrogen, like, was a, a, like I was explaining, they maintain mm -hmm. that lining. Mm -hmm. So for some reason, they protect against endometrial cancer. However, I guess because they, they interfere with your ovaries and how they mm -hmm. the hormones, so they increase your chance of developing ovarian and cervical cancer. So mm -hmm. a lot of people should be careful. Like when you're taking oral contraceptive, you should really ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. point. Good point. Because with this video, and again, even if I was a doctor, if I had a video like this as a certified doctor, I wouldn't be able to give anybody advice on, or the, if you should, I will recommend this one or this one. Really, mm -hmm. the type of contraceptives depends on your health profile, mm -hmm. your past medical history, mm -hmm. family profile, and also your doctor's assessment of your health. And it's mm -hmm. a shared decision-making between the patient and the doctor. Mm -hmm. So again, let me go back with estrogen, progesterone, combined oral contraceptives, a woman above 35 years old and smoking should not take it because it increases your chance of blood clots. So the women who just who just gave birth and breastfeeding, they should also not take estrogen because mm -hmm. estrogen can pass your breast and go into the milk. Okay, mm -hmm. and you don't want it to go to a baby because if you have a male baby, you're throwing off their hormones. And if you have a yes. female baby, you're throwing off their hormones too. They might start having things that you don't want them to have when they're a baby, right? Mm -hmm. Estrogen in and of itself, it makes your blood thicker and so more likely to clot. And that's why it's not good for women who smoke because smoking plus estrogen, bad combination. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So with women who, who, who are breastfeeding and they want to go back on birth control, they, they are usually given the progestin only contraceptive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the progestin can be used during that time. Okay. Um, so I guess I'm answering those two questions at the same time, the choice of the contraceptive and some of the side effects. Side effects. Yeah, and I know I've been talking about oral contraceptives, but the same concept is carried um, onto like the implants. You know how you see on TV, like women, oh, I have control of my life, mm -hmm. get the implant on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and this is convenient because I think it can last up to 10 years. I will confirm and change my answer there if, it, if I'm not mm -hmm. sure maybe five years, I don't know the specific, but it lasts a long time. So okay. let's say for college students, or if you don't want to be, be pregnant, if you're married for like five years, mm -hmm. the implant on is safe. So again, you see the answer is how do you choose the right one? It depends on your health profile, your doctor and what you want really. Yeah. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. The influence ones, those are hormonal, right? Yes. So okay. they release, let's say if it's a progesterone implant, mm -hmm. right? They release the progesterone at a very slow rate. Mm -hmm. So there's the implant on, which is, and there's also injection. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will not go into the specifics so I don't confuse my, yourself and myself. Again, <laughs> go to your doctor, you know, mm -hmm. just so you know out there, you can also get injections that also last longer. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And you can also get um, IUD. Mm -hmm. IUD stands for intrauterine device. So it's a device that is implanted into your uterus, your womb, okay? And so we have different types of IUD. We actually have an IUD that has progestin and that one is good and it is immediate. Let's say somebody had sexual intercourse today and it wasn't protected and they are afraid they might have, con they, they will potentially conceive. You can go to your GYN today if they can take you in and they will put in an IUD and IUD will prevent you from becoming pregnant. Wow. So it's from, like instant. Yeah. From, from that exchange that happened before. Yes. Well, so long as it's within five days. 
Wow. In five Very interesting. Because, yeah, because it, it, especially if it has progestin and also the IUD, you know, it's in your uterus. So even if, let's say, con conception took place, right, it will prevent mm -hmm. the, the zygote or that, I don't want to confuse the medical terms, but that tiny baby that is forming from implanting mm -hmm. into the lining of the uterus. Okay, so I see it that. It will just be shared as tissue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so IUDs are like effective. I think like, I think I'm not wrong with the statistics, 92%. So like they are effective mm. and it's instant. It's in, unlike the vasectomy for the males that we talked about, you have to wait up to 12 weeks. 12 weeks. IUD is instant. So we have the progestin IUD, but we also have the copper IUD. So copper just creates an environment that is not good for the sperm or the egg to survive. So they're not going to survive there. Okay. And again, it's an invasive procedure. So someone is inserting a device in you. So some of the side effects is you can have pain, you know, for a few days, you can have some spotting because mm. it might scratch some parts in your body and then you bleed a little bit. But I think doctors recommend IUD because it can be taken <laughs> out whenever you're ready to conceive, it can be taken out. Interesting. Remember, yeah, remember all these hormonal contraceptives, mm -hmm. they do not protect you against STIs. Okay. Yeah. Now, to talk about another side effect, I know a lot of people have questions, or I guess it's a myth that I also learned about, and I was like, what? This is true? So the biggest question that most women have, or that prevents people from going on birth control is, will I gain weight when I'm on birth control? So apparently, if you are on hormonal birth control, so with progestin and estrogen, you do not, it, it doesn't lead to gain weight. They say, According to the research papers that I read, women who are like, you know, the more you grow, the more likely you are to gain weight. So okay. the, the hormonal contraceptives have been shown not to have like a direct causal effect on weight gain. How about oral? Same, because it's hormonal contraceptive. Okay. Last question is obviously the, the penis about weight gain is so important because I remember when I went to my doctor as an adult mm -hmm. and talked about contraceptives I mean she laid out from like A to Z all the different ones that I could the things you know based on my profile like you said what would make sense for me you know when I was thinking that I might want to conceive a child how many years from now would that be all those different types of considerations which is really really good so that I could narrow down what it is you know what type of birth control could work best for me um but one of the things that I think in addition to like weight gain and things like that, or maybe things affecting my mood that I was really concerned about is fertility. So I do want to be a mom. I do, you know, I want to have at least one child. So I do want, you know, a healthy, happy baby. Yes. And I don't want, you know, any decision that I make today to impact that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I am, I'm curious, you know, can contraceptive impact fertility? I don't know if that's a short a question with a short answer, but I think that's a really, I, I can't be the only one that's also wondering that. Very good question, Bri. Very, mm. very good question. And I think I will want to answer that question with a professional. Maybe I can convince one of my doctors to come to my channel one day and teach us about that. However, <laughs> short answer to your question is not really, because most of these uh, contraceptives are reversible like the hormonal ones I was talking about, like the implanon or the injection, you know, especially the implanon, like once you're ready to get pregnant, they just take it out. And then maybe after a few days, your hormone levels go back to normal. Same with oral contraceptives. Um, some, some might, depending on the one you're taking, some might take longer to like, you know, to, to restabilize or to go back to the balance that your, your mm -hmm. body likes it to be. But I, I, do not think they affect um, your fertility. And of course, hysterectomy, those are out of the questions because those ones you're taking a portion of your body out. So yeah, but with the hormonal contraceptives, yeah. And with the IUD, especially the IUD, it's like once you're ready to, it's like it acts quickly. And also once you're ready to get pregnant, they just take it out and you can awesome. start planning yeah, to conceive. That's, that's helpful. That's yeah. really helpful. And before, before we finish, I wanted to talk about, I wrote them down because I didn't want to forget some of the other reasons that people can go on contraceptives. Women who have abnormal uterine bleeding. So some people have very painful, very heavy menses. So uh -huh. you've got 
can decide to to put you on oral or different types of contraceptives so that they can help with that. Also, women with PCOS, this is polycystic ovarian syndrome. And this, you know, it's like what happens with PCOS, and it's another topic that I might bring an expert to talk about this, right? It's mm -hmm. like you have your, your follicles, turn, like your eggs, they turn into cysts if they don't get released properly. Mm -hmm. So also some women have something we call hyperandrogenism, and this is when they have like a high level of the male hormone. We, we do have male hormones, but at a lower level compared to our male part partners. But some women who have higher levels of the male hormone, so they can have acne or something we call hirsutism, and it's the growth of hair in women in areas where it usually grows in men. So women can be put on contraceptives for this. Also, some women get migraines because of contraception, I mean, because of menstrual period. So sometimes contraceptions can help with that because the migraines can be very disabling. Mm -hmm. so that's a reason. And also behavioral changes before um, contraception. Bri and I, Naomi, Bri and I were talking about this before we started recording. Mm -hmm. We're talking about that. It is called the premenstrual syndrome. Okay. It can really be debilitating, you know, and this is before your menstrual period, like you, you have very bad moods. I, I know. Yeah, I know. Sometimes, like they are such, a, especially the people you love the most are the ones you just talk to them in a You don't want to talk to them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's for some people, it can be very disabling, but they can be very anxious. They feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. They can have terrible behavioral changes. And mm -hmm. because of this, then your doctor will decide to put you on contraceptives. Now, mm -hmm. the list is long. And that's why we have like two, three years of fellowship on fertility and contraceptives. And we have experts to do that. But again, mm -hmm. the purpose of this channel, of this video, is to educate the public so people are aware and, mm -hmm. you know, you can have an idea even when you're going to see your doctor you can say hi i watched this on lydia's channel she's a medical student and she was talking about blah 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 do you think that might be going on with me or you know <laughs> yeah to keep us talking yeah, keep, keep us talking, talking and knowing about ourselves exactly yeah, so, yeah. connecting the medical dots connecting the medical dots <laughs> oh, it's awful Marco. well lydia i know that we this has been a very enlightening conversation right. and I'm, I'm sure that the women out there and the gentlemen out there um, can benefit from watching and re-watching this video saving it as their favorites and being able to you know maybe go to their doctor or have more you know educated conversation so I just wanted to before we close up just express the the, the my appreciation for being able to be a part of this conversation, first and foremost, to learn more. But I also just wanted to say that I think this is a great topic. I think there's so many things that can spring off of this conversation. We talked about STDs and STIs. We talked to a more in-depth look into, um, you know, different types of um, side effects, things like that. I think fertility obviously is a, is a topic all by itself. So um, I'm excited to see what, what comes next. Mm -hmm. very good i'm so happy you came in today naomi we miss yeah. you sister naomi so i'm back you're here today mm -hmm. i'm back and like we said i'm really grateful as well this was really really informative yes like, there's a lot of things i learned about myself i'm like wow okay yeah. You know, and I love the visualization of you being the uterus and your hands in the fallopian tubes and everything made sense. <laughs> that was really nice. Guys, subscribe and learn. Let's keep learning. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. These are my sisters, you all. I love you. Thank you so much. Love you too. Channel. And we'll be recording more videos together. So stay tuned, like this video, subscribe and share it with your social networks via Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere you can think of. I will appreciate you.